Welcome back to my channel. JSOX was nice enough to send this out and this is their brand new. This is the brand new deck. Now this is an RGB docking station for Steam Deck. However, this is gonna work with pretty much everything. And as you all know, I have a Rogue Ally and it's been my bread and butter recently. So I'm gonna be trying this out with the Rogue Ally and using it on my dedicated Rogue Ally desk that I'm building upstairs. More to come on that, so stay tuned. But JSOX was nice enough to send this out for me to test for review. And I'm super excited about this. This should basically work with pretty much every handheld on the market that is USB-C compatible. So let's jump into the video. We're gonna do some unboxing. We're gonna try this out and play with it on the desk upstairs. Um, and then we're gonna come together and do some final thoughts. They have a big brother to this coming out. It's a, this is an eight in one, there's a 12 in one coming out soon. And it comes in white, so more to come on that. But let's go ahead and jump into the video. We're going to get into all the fun bits, but first, let's take a look around the HB0801 dock. Now, the first thing you will see is the touch button on the top of the dock. This is not how you control the RGB. However, this merely turns the RGB on and off. We'll get to how you do that a little bit later. Moving into the dock itself, though, it has a very cool aesthetic build, and in my opinion, it looks snazzy. Now, this is necessary if it's going to sit on any respectable desk setup in 2023. To place your Ally or Steam Deck, whatever you got, on the dock, you just push this pop-out tray, now the spring on it is so-so, meaning I don't think it will last up to a million pop-outs, but I also don't think that you should just be pushing this in and out like I am just to show you how it works. Uh, once you set it on your desk, you'll probably never touch it again. Now on the bottom, you can see the RGB ring. Now there is six different lighting elements that can be controlled in the open RGB software, and you can turn it on and off by holding the top touch button for two seconds on the top. This is an eight in one dock with, you guessed it, eight inputs and one out to the PC, which technically the one is a two way information back to the dock from the game console and back to the console with the other seven. As for my noobs, now we respect noobs on this channel. We all start somewhere. Now from left to right, you have a USB-C in. That's where you plug it into the Ally. A USB-C 3.0 at five gigabytes. HDMI out at 4K 60. The 12 in one has 4K 120 and is designed for more hardcore needs. Um, but a gigabyte ethernet port for direct blazing fast internet, that's necessary. Two USB 3.0 ports at five gigabytes and a hundred watt USB-C with power delivery. That's where you plug in the power. And on the side, a USB 2.0, that's for like mics and headphones. Okay, let's get started in here. <laughs> I get carried away. Okay, first let's plug in the power. Um, this takes up to 100 watt to power the connected peripherals, kind of. Now second, I plugged in the HDMI, but the order really doesn't matter. But what is important is that at the very end, you plug in your console to the first one on the left. Now that is the end, and that's pretty much universal. Minus um, Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is not compatible, but that's on Nintendo's end. It has nothing really to do with this dock. Now that we have our setup, holding the touch button at the top for a few seconds will turn the RGB on and off. So that's good. It doesn't really drain the battery because it's plugged into power, but you have that option if you need it. To put your Steam Deck or your Ally in there, just go ahead and push the pop out uh, button. It pops out, go ahead and sit your Ally in there. And then from there, it's up to you kind of how you want it to sit and fit within the dock. I wish they would have had the right angle from the older dock because this one covers up the air vents on my Ally, but last thing is to plug this into the console. <laughs> First impressions without focusing on the ally and what its experience is equals to 100% satisfaction for what the 8-in-1 is. Now I know that some machines will be capable of higher resolution and frame rates, but as you can see from the video, this HB0801 handles the ally admirably. Now it has the ability to create multiple displays using the ally as one and my monitor as a second. And I can move windows across the different screens and I don't have to worry about having to reset my dock every time I plug it in, which I've had to do in the past with some other, other products. When I restart my ally or plug my ally back in, it, re it recognizes basically that the ally is back plugged in and all the settings come back the way that I had them previously stored and I'm up and running again. 
So why do you need a dock? Well, peripherals and the ability to use a monitor point blankly. Again, shout out to my noobs, but the HP0801 has technically eight inputs. This allows me to plug in my keyboard, mouse, headphones, monitor, the Ally itself, a hardwired internet connection that doesn't exist on the console itself, and power the whole setup with a 100 watt power supply. And that still leaves one USB-C 3.0 with up to five GBs of transfer speed for some expanded stores. This basically changes the Ally to a dedicated PC setup, unlocking a completely new functionality within the Rogue Ally. That's not too bad, right, for $59.99. So to answer the question, don't buy your kid that cheap laptop for the same price. Buy them an Ally, this dock, and an external storage. But all jokes aside, I'm serious. Lastly, before we get out of here, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the R. G B. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're here, right? And I continue to see this in the comment section. Yes, RGB does increase FPS. The HB0801 uses open RGB to manage its RGB settings due to its ability to work with ARM-based machines. And it's an open source software, but not just the dock itself. It can control other devices and peripherals that it detects as well. Now in the settings, you can adjust the Rogue Allies RGB and its different zones and the dock itself. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The software is very responsive. You can see the changes almost immediately. Now I haven't played with this deeply, but I can confirm that it works without a hitch. But as far as like customization and trying a bunch of, you know, your products together, although I know that it can, I have not confirmed on my own end, but the premise of the software at its core, it gets the job done very well. My final thoughts on this. This is perfect setup for the Rogue Ally. Now, the bigger brother does have a little bit more features that you can use. We'll get into that in the future if we review that product. But this is a really good product because the Rogue Ally dock that you can purchase for, I think it was $70, only has one input. And so that makes it pretty much non-usable, which is weird you have to connect a dock to a dock to use it so the only caveat to this is that so far rogue ally is limiting it seems like third-party docks the 25 watts power while with the standard useless dock you can get 30 watts of power so it's interesting that's the only thing that's holding this up but i don't think it has anything to do with this dock it may just be the rogue ally this is perfect rgb lights all of the features the eight ports it definitely gives me exactly what I need for that setup upstairs to allow me to be pr productive, to game, and just basically have a nice looking setup with the RGB. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, stay cozy in that crazy world and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.